Hi guys, so today in today's video we've got something a little bit different. We've got Dan Chambers here. Now some of you might remember I have mentioned his channel a few times. He's got a few, few cool little projects on like this Volkswagen Caddy that you can see here. So Dan, do you want to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, got a YouTube channel, play with cars and restoring a Mark 1 Golf GTI at the minute and then bought this Caddy van which seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, done a few modifications to it and then give the whole painting thing a go, which went all right, I think. A few little issues with it, which is, uh, yeah, what we've come to see Tony today to try and sort out. So this was his first attempt at doing a full respray, and we've been speaking, me and Dan, for the past sort of two months, trying to help him through the different stages and give him a little bit of help and advice. Now, he's had a little bit of an issue when he was polishing and just got a slight little burn through on the top edge of the wing and also on the bottom of the wing. So. One of the jobs that we're going to do today is help him fix this little issue on the wing and also get the fuel cap painted for him because he ran out of paint on that. So we're just going to help him out with them two bits. And then hopefully once we've got those done this afternoon, we're then going to do a little bit of beginner paintwork training just to try and help Dan improve so that on his future projects, he can try and make them a little bit better and make his job a little bit easier. So I'm going to go and get the GoPro and everything sorted out and then we'll get cracking. So this is the job that we're going to be looking at first on the van. He just wants a little bit of help to blow these in where he's rubbed through at the top and also where he's rubbed through on the bottom of the arch here. Now, I'm quite confident that Dan is more than confident to blow these in, but with the van being finished and looking so nice and it being his first attempt, what he didn't want to do was risk blowing these in and messing up the van. So he's asked if we can help him out doing these little bits on the van, which I'm more than happy to. So those are the bits that we're going to take a look at first. So the first thing that we're going to do is just protect these edges on the panels that we're not going to paint with a little bit of tape and then prep up the areas that need um, the little blow-ins before we get the panel prepped up ready for paint. Um, just using a little bit of tape to protect the pillar there so that we don't accidentally scratch that because that little rub through on the top there does get quite close. Now the way that I prepped these was to use a P400 and then use a P600 softback sanding sponge just to refine those down a little bit and leave the area nice and smooth. Now this is quite a long video. In the first half of this video, we're going to go through the repair work that we helped Dan out on this wing. And then in the second half of the video, something that I know a lot of my viewers and hopefully a lot of Dan's viewers as well will be interested in is a little bit of a paint training session and we've tried to keep as much of the footage of the live sort of paint training session that me and Dan did on this day. So I'd love it if you guys could carry on watching, watch till the end, and then you can get an idea of the paint training session that we went through. And obviously you could be able to get to see the results of Dan's painting on the day. Now this is the first time that I met Dan in person. We spoke a lot on the phone, um, helping him out with his caddy. Um, he's been a viewer of mine. And since we started speaking, I've been a viewer of his, following his projects. He's got some really cool projects. So if you're not subscribed, I will leave a link in the description to Dan's channel. And also, if you're interested, on Sunday, um, Dan will be posting up the video of this day that me and him did together from his point of view of being trained and the work that we did on the day. Now, he's a really cool bro. He's got great personality. So check out his channel because I'm sure you guys that watch my videos and like the paintwork side of things, will love the projects that Dan's got going on over on his channel. So we've got all these areas now smoothed out with a P400 just to get everything down to a nice smooth level. Then we're using a soft back sanding sponge, so I'm using a P600 just to refine those P400 scratches down and leave a really nice smooth surface between these broken layers of paint, which will help a tiny little bit of wet on wet go down a little bit nicer in a minute when I pop that on just to seal these edges and also obviously leave a really nice smooth keyed finish on that area where we've sanded it. Now it's keen to remember for you guys that are watching this video that might think wow these rub throughs are huge. This is Dan's first attempt with a spray gun and especially doing a respray. So his attempt and what he's done on this is to be quite honest quite astounding compared to some work that I see coming out of some body shops. Um, the 
overall finish and just general look of the van was extremely nice and it's not something that you thought that a guy in a farm building would have painted in basically a sheet made spray booth um, with a little fan at one end and some you know some filters put in there you really wouldn't think that a complete novice to spray painting would have painted this and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to get Dan down on this day to help him out and improve his skills right so we've got all this panel prepped up now everything's been done in grey scotch we've got all the little repair areas rubbed down and feathered out with a 600 soft sand pad to finish those off so what we'll probably do is put a tiny little bit of wet and wet primer on to seal them up and also seal up, up there just before we put the base coat down because it is fresh base coat the base coat that dan's got is solvent so we don't want to risk getting any areas where it's going to blow through and cause any reactions on the paint So with all the panel masked up, it's time to put a little bit of wet on wet on these areas just to seal them up. Now, a little quick tip for you DIY gals out there. If you haven't got a spray booth and your average wet on wet primer will take a little bit longer than you want to go off. Um, and especially on this day, we were under quite a time constraint because we only had so much of the day to get this repaired and painted and also fit in a painting session. If you use a good high quality um, rattle cam primer then you can very quickly and easily um, apply a nice light smooth layer to seal up those paint edges before you come around to do your paintwork and it will literally flash off in probably around about five to ten minutes and then you can go straight over it even with something like this with a solvent base coat now to repair this we've got a standard mix of solvent base coat mixed at two to one um, I believe it was Meeper base coat that Dan brought with him and we're running that through my Segola 4600 Extreme. It's got a 1.2 XL setup. Um, and it's the Aqua Air Cap. Now, even though it's the Aqua Air Cap, it's really good for solvent or um, waterborne paints. And also, I found out recently, it's also quite a nice clear gun. Now, we're just going to gently feather these in. And throughout this whole day, as much as I needed to get this part of the job done quickly and at my normal pace so I couldn't sort of teach Dan through what I was doing, I was explaining each and every stage as we went through. And especially for a novice painter like Dan, um, just trying to show him what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. So on this area, I'm just trying to colour up that primary area first, just to make everything an even colour and I'm not worrying too much about the blends. Now, with this being fresh paint, I'm also explaining that with it being already a freshly painted panel, and now we've got fresh solvents in the thinners in the base coat that we're using, we don't want to go too heavy because it will have the potential of like fry ups and paint reactions because we've got such fresh, harsh base coat and fresh thinners in the gun now that we're using. The big risk would be if we were go too wet that those would eat into the fresh layers of paint that are on there and start peeling the edges of those layers up and that's where you'll get ringing around the repairs and that sort of thing and we'll just end up with an absolute nightmare so it's always good that if you come back and you're kind of doing a bit of a redo to just make sure that you go very very light with the paint and just take your time don't rush it because you know i'd rather do a job right and it take me 10 minutes longer 
then rush it and then have to do it again the next day. Now we're using a standard 2k clear coat for this job, I'm using the same gun again. I'm running this around about 1.6 to 1.8 bar, I've got the fluid at around about one and three quarter turns out and I'm running a full fan. I left a good, I'd say five minutes between coats just so we could get a nice first coat and then a nice tacky second coat for that clear to adhere to and stick to and obviously reduce the risk of runs. And again, I was trying to show Dan at each stage of this what I'm doing, why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it. And I have to say at every step of the way, even on the repair stage of this, he was right over my shoulder soaking up all the information like an absolute sponge, um, asking what I was doing, why I'm doing it. And for me, as a guy who trains a lot of people um, to paint or polish and do a lot of different aspects of this job, it's really refreshing to get somebody like that who really genuinely has got a real drive to learn um, to improve his skills. Um, we offered this day to Dan for free to come up to try and help him progress and I really enjoyed the day from a painter's point of view passing on my skills to another potential painter um, and to obviously help him improve what he's going to be doing in the future on his own projects. Um, he did say at the end of the day like you know he really couldn't thank me enough and I said to him that the biggest thanks for me would be to see that he can come to his next project with a little bit more confidence in what he's doing and get it even nicer than this project. And you can see here by this van, this, this does not look like a van that a novice painted in the first place. All the conversations that we had on the phone over the last few months, he really has taken all that information in and that is what's led him to putting out a really nice job on this van. Right, so the main reason that Dan has come to us today is when we've been chatting, we wanted to try and get him up here and see if we can get him a little bit of training on the paint side of things to help him improve. Now, for a first attempt at a van, that van outside there is absolutely stunning for a beginner. But Dan wants to learn how to do this um, to a higher standard and do all his projects himself. So we've offered him a free in-house day to do some paint training. So we're gonna get some paint mixed up get suited up, come back in the booth, and talk Dan through the process of how we do it and how to improve from where he's at and try and move up a little notch so that then when he goes away, he can improve on that. I'm gonna do that using these two panels and we're also gonna take you guys along with us on the journey. The most important part is the prep. Yeah. Right, so we've keyed everything up, everything scuffed up. I went across with the soft pad, just de-nibbed the little nibs to make sure that it's nice and smooth. These do come primed, so yeah. you can just scotch them. If you've red scotch them, grey scotch them, as long as they're matted off nicely, you're good. Um, you asked me earlier, microfiber or yeah. towel. Personally, microfiber, it's got a lot more fibers that's gonna get in all the edges and all the nooks and crannies that you've got. So what we'll always do is we'll wet the towel, give the panel a light wet, but don't go mad on the panel because you will be wasting yeah. panel wipe because it dries off so fast. And when you do panel wipe, Pay real good attention to make sure you're getting all your edges and everything in all the little gaps. And especially like the backs. A lot of people don't think about the back areas. And when you blow them off, yeah. the backs of the panels are as important as the front. So we come round here with the air blower, like with the spray gun, everything down there and the front of the panel completely wrecks it. So if you want to do the same on that one. That end, well that'll have got rid of your fingerprints. Any oils, anything that could be possibly on the panel. Then the next major stage would be a tack cloth. So for you guys that don't know, a tack cloth is basically what it says. It's just a tacky cloth. We use these very, very lightly. So if you don't go very lightly, they do leave a slight residue from the tacky um, coating that's on the cloth, so to speak, and it can transfer to the panel if you're not careful. So this is something that you really have to do very, very gently. And that will just remove any dust or any lint or anything from the surface of your pipe. So the most important bit you come to learn today is trying to help you improve a bit of your painting. Yep. Now you know what everything does on the gun. Um, we've got the air regulator. So on this one, the air regulator is at the bottom. Yeah. Um, so it's got a digital gauge in it, as opposed to like the analog gauge. Right, yeah, yeah. 
We've got the fluid, we've got the fan. Now, for a full panel or for a full air for the projects that you're doing, keep it on a full fan. For a base coat, with a good gun like this, you want to be running probably about one to one and a half bar. Right. So around 20 to 25 psi. You don't need to go higher. Any higher than that, you're going to be fighting yourself with the paint on. Now, the way that I always say to someone who's novice or early in painting is to set yourself a target. So you've got full fan, set the pressure at about one and a half bar, or between one to one and a half, and then hit something on your fluid. So wind your fluid all the way in, and then on most guns, you've got a marking on the gun. So for this one, for instance, we'll bring it out one and a half. Yep. We'll try it, okay? When we start painting, it feels too dry, We'll come out another half turn. Yeah. If it feels too wet, we can take it in half a turn and then gauge it to what feels right to your speed, your distance. So you're not rushing and the gun's not pushing you yeah. to run around the car. You know, it's the same as whether it's a hammer or a screwdriver. You're working the tool and you want the tool to work for yeah. you rather than you chasing around that Quite tool. Level. Now, at the same time, when we come to do this, the kind of key points to remember are the distance you are from the panel. Yeah. So you always want to be keeping a nice distance. Yeah. You always want to be keeping a nice distance yeah. from the panel. You don't want to be at an angle to the panel. So you always want to be parallel to the panel at the yeah. same distance. So when you get a panel like this, which is low, and then it's coming out, and it comes over, and then it's coming back in. Yeah. In our mind, we want to be following that contour of the panel all the way across. So the, the two posts are always aiming straight out with the paint. So if you're coming up the side, they want to be aiming straight on. When you paint the top there, they want to be aiming straight down. Yep. So everything is always aiming at where you want to hit. Okay? Now, about the size of the fan. Okay, so the first thing is your distance. The distance will give you a certain size fan. Yeah. If the fan's that big, the next one we want to line up half again. Yep. And just a slight overlap. Now Keeping the same distance and the same overlap, but put the same amount of paint on from top to bottom, no matter what you do. Yeah. So you shouldn't end up with that dry area at the bottom and at the top, or vice versa. And the speed. So keeping, when you start yourself off, if you get into a nice rhythm, in case of trigger on, trigger off, trigger on, trigger off. Yeah. And you get into that nice, even speed. And then as you move up, you just keep that nice, constant, straight parallel to the panel, the same distance. Yeah. Don't rush, just take your time. And at all times, concentrate on Perfect. the speed, the distance, and the overlap. Yeah. And those are the most important parts and probably the biggest thing that a lot of people get wrong. They're going to go too wet because they think that it needs to look like glass. As I did. <laughs> or they're going to go too dry because they're scared of getting a run. Runs can be fixed. Yeah. And mistakes for you guys watching at home, even someone like myself, we still make mistakes. We actually posted a video on a long back on a mistake that I did on a Porsche. And even as professionals, we still day to day make mistakes. The biggest thing with a mistake is learning from that mistake. What did I do wrong? And then trying your hardest not to do that wrong the next time. That's what moves you forward in your skill level. And the more mistakes you make, as mad as it sounds, the faster that you're going to move up as far as your skill level. Because if you're learning from their mistakes and you're always pushing for a higher quality, you'll keep pushing yourself higher and higher and higher until you get the best you can be. And for, for me as a painter, that's always been my aim, to be the best that I can be. I don't care if I'm better than Dan or better than anyone else. My priority has always been the best that I can be. Now, a quick little disclaimer for you guys watching this video. At this point, I am not wearing a mask. Now, I do not recommend at all that you spray without a mask on. It's just on a training day like this, then unfortunately, I need to be able to speak and tutor Dan through what I'm doing. And with the noise of the spray booth and also a mask on, there's no way that you can hear anything that I'm saying. So that is on my head, but I do recommend that anyone wears the correct PPE, i.e. a paint suit, gloves, and a mask when you are spraying. So at this stage, what I am doing is I'm just showing Dan through on this first panel what the way that I would go about it and the sort of the way that I would go about painting the edges first and then how we would move on to then the face. Now I do have some beginner 
series videos that do go through base coat application, clear coat application and a few other things and I will leave the link in the top right hand corner to that playlist if you, any of you guys are beginners and are interested in seeing a full step by step um, video series on how to spray paint as a beginner. Now, now we've got the edges done, our concentration obviously is going to be the flat face. So what I'm explaining now is just keeping that nice distance away from the panel and just getting that nice overlap as you move up the panel. Now, even there, I have just tweaked the paint slightly so we've got a nice even paint flow because we started off and it just felt a little bit dry. So I've just put a tiny bit more paint out. Now, a lot of novice and new painters will struggle when they get to something like this arch here, which is what I'm explaining to Dan. It's in your mind that it's too easy to try and follow that arch around um, because the natural instinct of your body is to follow that arch. Whereas we're not concentrating on that arch, we need to concentrate on the wet edge that we've got of the base coat as we're moving up the panel. So instead of following the arch in an arc around, I'm just showing Dan that instead, we will paint straight across as if the arch isn't actually there. That way we keep the same straight edge move and the same wet edge moving up the panel as we go along. Now, Dan for a novice, as far as the painter goes, has got quite gun con good gun control. Um, he has used the spray gun a little bit. Not a spray gun of this sort of standard, but he's had some time on a spray gun, which makes it a little bit easier to try and teach him because he has that little bit of experience. He's also very good at picking things up as far as like being a guy that works a lot with his hands in what he does in his projects. So he's quite an easy guy to work with and the things that I tell him he was picking up quite quickly. Now for this second coat we're just going to do the same as we did for the first coat. We don't want like a really really wet coat going on. Um, it's not something that I would recommend for beginners to try to absolutely smash the paint on. You can put three coats at a lighter um, sort of thickness and sort of like put three medium wet coats on instead of doing two really heavy wet coats. Um, for a beginner, the three coat methods that little bit easier because there's a lot less chance of getting a run. And as you get more comfortable with the spray gun and you get a little bit more gun control, you can up how wet you go and obviously as you learn the products and materials that you're using as well. All these things come into making an experienced painter. It's not just about being able to pick up a spray gun and knock out a really good panel. Um, there are all these little things because a lot of colours work differently. Dan especially um, was worried about metallics so we picked um, this particular colour which is um, Volkswagen LA7W. It's a really coarse metallic silver so if you painted this panel wrong it would show up by a mile. It would be really stripy or really mottly. So I was trying to show him through how to put down some nice even coats, um, get all his edges not to miss any areas to make sure that he's got full coverage on anything before he moves on to a next stage and also once we were done we went through the drop or effect coat as some people call it to get that nice even distribution on the metallic so you don't have to worry about any banding in the metallics or any mottling in silvers and he really did pick it up quite well and you'll probably notice in this footage the further he goes on he does get a lot more comfortable and gets that little bit more relaxed and as he gets more comfortable and more relaxed and more used to the feel of the spray gun and how it's spraying he's really does settle down and start absolutely nailing the coats now you can see that i'm not really stopping him a lot um one thing i try not to do unless someone is making a real severe mistake is stop someone in the middle of doing something i'd rather almost let them make the mistake show them when where they've gone wrong what the effect of that mistake is and then they can improve on it on the next coat because at this stage in base coat, we can fix anything, so it's not too much of an issue. So this is where I'm just showing Dan my two coat drop coat method, which would be to angle one drop coat one way, come right back from the panel as well. So we're just dusting that panel, getting all those metallics nice and even. Now, on this first coat, Dan starts off really well. And then again, quite a common novice mistake is as the panel gets thinner, 
his overlap gets a lot tighter at the front there so he does a couple of overlaps now that's not something that's sort of just that Dan's done um, I've had quite a few guys on paint days that have done exactly the same thing they think that where the panel's smaller they need to do more of an overlap or move faster you need to keep the same distance and the same speed at all times now for the clear coat stage um, we're using the same spray gun again we're running it around about 1.8 bar and we've got this around about I think one and, a, one and three quarter turns out on the fluid now one thing that Dan said when I put my coat on is he thought it was really wet um, and he was a little bit more reserved when he put his coat on now with this particular spray gun with the 1.2 XL nozzle in that this runs I would normally run this at around about three to four turns out on the fluid when I am normally in the booth spraying clear coat now I will turn it down on a training day like this because even if a panel looks wet and the way that I explained it to Dan was if you put an inch of water in the bottom of a bucket or if you fill the bucket it still looks as wet it's just obviously if you're chucking a load of clear coat on there's a lot more chance of a run but you can get the same wet finish with um, a nice smooth coat of clear and a thin coat of clear as you can with a really absolutely heavy coat of clear so I've set the spray gun for this so we can spray at a nice comfortable steady steady pace um, Dan doesn't need to rush around um, which is one thing that he mentioned one thing for the reason for his speed at one point on this and going too fast on this first coat was because he was worried about keeping a wet edge um, and keeping the clear coat wet um, which obviously when you're on a one panel job it will stay wet anyway but that just again comes down to experience but also the run factor so as you can see he comes across and he's kind of goes a little bit too quickly um, I didn't stop him on this first coach so I could show him the issue of going too fast um, and not relaxing um, and then on the consecutive coats, once he'd done the edges, I actually told Dan to take a step back, reset, think about the main points, which are your speed, your distance, and your overlap. Take a breath, relax, and then go again. Um, which he said he found really helpful. And I find that with a lot of novice guys, that is the best way to go. Don't overthink it. Don't stress about what you're doing do the edges just take a step back take a quick breath think to yourself right you know i need to work on my speed my distance my overlap and then just go and just be comfortable in what you're doing now if you do it and something goes wrong say you get a run then you know next time you need to adjust your fluid a little bit if it goes too dry you need to put that little bit more fluid on but the biggest thing is feeling relaxed in what you're doing um if you sort of rush in. I tend that most people have, tend to rush because they almost feel like a bit agitated, like they need to do it faster. Well, you just need to sort of calm down, relax, get a nice even flow. And you can see now that as Dad's go, Dan's going on, his gun control and his overall body language is looking a lot more comfortable, a lot more relaxed. Um, and it shows in the final product on these two wings just how comfortable and relaxed he felt by the end of the spraying what in effect was kind of like six to eight coats of paint um, across a couple of panels and they did actually come out really nice um, these panels were a credit to Dan and hopefully the time that he spent with us on this day and I really wish that I'd had a little bit more time to spend in the booth with him to help him progress and sort of tune his skills that little bit further um, because he came on leaps and bounds across these few hours here that we spent in the booth so to be able to spend like a full day painting in the booth would have been absolutely amazing and we could have taught him so much more but possibly that is an opportunity in the future if Dan gets the spare time um, to pop up one day and we'll spend another day in the booth with Dan and help him progress that a little bit further. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this completely different look and completely different style of video than we normally do. 
um, with this bit of a training day with Dan. As I said earlier on in the video, Dan shot all the footage from his perspective for this day as well and he will be putting that up live on Sunday so please pop over and check out some of his videos and give this guy a subscribe because I had a real blast this day working with Dan and as you can see he absolutely nailed the finish on these panels to a perfect factory finish. Alright so as far as that panel goes Dan, both of these panels are really nice and um, got a nice factory amount of orange peel on there, there's not too much, there's not too little. <coughs> now as I was saying We've got a few nibs, but both of us are not in suits today because we're in and out of the boob all day and we're trying to film as well as obviously take Dan through a painting tutorial. So it's not easy to be suited and booted and be coming in and out and recording clips and all the rest of it. So we have got a few nibs, but as far as if this was a Ford Fiesta panel and it was in Ford Moondust Silver, this would be, there'd be no issue bolting this straight on the car for Dan. Um, it's come out really nice. We'd literally just denib the tiny little bits and bolt it on and it's a perfect factory finish. Now, if he wanted to go to like the show car standard that he does on his jobs, he could just give this a real quick full platinum polish and it'd be like a mirror. Um, this panel outside in a minute um, and we'll get a shot of Dan's panels outside for you as well so you can see. There's always a lot less peel outside than there is inside because of the lighting inside and the artificial lighting. But as far as I'm concerned, mate, um, from where you were at and where you are now, that's a big improvement. Massive, I've learned a hell of a lot just uh, through painting them you know, too. I hope you have, you know, you can take something away from today. Oh, definitely. That's gonna help you in the future on your projects. Well worth, well worth coming up, definitely. I've, um, yeah, learned to not flap as much and just chill down, Yeah. enjoy it. One of the biggest things with painting is just, like I said to you before, don't worry about me being a professional painter and you being a novice. We're just two guys painting two panels in a spray booth. You just chill out, relax, follow the basic rules and the basic rules that I was explaining to Dan in this are probably the most common things that people forget, which is the speed that your gun is, the speed that you're moving at, the distance that your gun is from the panel and keeping that consistent all the way and also keeping it a consistent overlap because the finish on the top of the panel should be exactly the same as the finish on the bottom and vice versa. And by keeping those three things identical all the way along, you'll end up with a nice finish and consistently all over. Or if you do it slightly wrong, you can end up with a bad finish and consistently all over. But that consistency is something that you build with a little bit more confidence. Yeah. Yeah. And even today, from where we started with like spray gun control and then yeah. telling you to sort of chill out and slow down, the gun control got better and better and you just felt, looked like you settled down and got a lot more comfortable. Yeah and then put out two really nice panels. I mean, I'm quite particular about my paintwork um, and we're quite renowned for putting out nice work, should we say, from our shop. And I'd be more than happy to nib and polish those now and put them on a customer's car if this was a paint job in my shop. So I've got the job then. Credit to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, it's, uh, it's definitely been well worth coming up. Thank you very much for the invite. And... Not a problem, mate. Anytime. <laughs> okay, guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a different video with Dan. Don't forget, I will be leaving a link in the description of the video to his channel so you can pop over, check out some of his projects. Now, Dan has got a bit of a mission to try and get that silver plaque this year. So, if you like the content over there, then subscribe to Dan as well. He's got some really cool videos, a great personality, and it would mean a lot to both of us if you went over there and gave it a subscribe. So, hope you enjoyed the video. It's bye from me. Bye from me. And I'll see you again in the next one. Cheers.